storyteller and I support leaders and entrepreneurs like yourselves to find their story, craft it, so structure it, and then deliver it with impact. And uh, this is the thing, there's, there's three parts to that. We all have a story to tell, but so many of us um, don't think that it's very worthwhile. We don't think that we have an important story because we haven't been through some trauma or done any big challenge with our lives. And that's not true. We all are full of stories and stories occur all throughout our lives in um, some of the most um, obvious places. So once you get that story, it's essential to know how to structure it so that the story works for you because there's a business stories are purpose told stories. So there's something that you want to do with that story, whether it's bond with your community, persuade people or enlighten people. Those are three things, basic things that a story can do. Um, but today, I really want to talk to you about how to turn your stories into business assets. Um, my fascination with stories began as a kid in a library with biographies. Couldn't get enough of them. I just devoured them because, you know, it was so fascinating to not only learn about all these different people in our world, but how did they do their life? How did they do that? And, and, and what made it possible? And how could, how could I, you know... Do anything with my life because this was when I was an adolescent you know and we're supposed to be um, going for careers counseling and you're thinking you know this comes on from the the, the time when it's like what do you want to be when you grow up to um, well how are you going to actually do that now that you are grown up and uh, so looking at how people did their lives was a real fascination for me memoirs and that's what stories do uh, they don't ignore data so there isn't a separation in a story between fact finders and magic. They come together because it's the data and the facts that underpin that story. But what stories give you is how and why. And that is uh, where I'm going to just share my screen um, with you and um, see what we can come up with here. So I'll give you a little visuals because I know there's a lot of teachers in the world uh, in the in the room. So we all know that we have different learning styles. Some of us have the the uh, auditory. Some of us are kinesthetic, like myself, which is why when I started out, I started out as a dancer. Um, that was like another life ago. But <laughs> I uh, I started out dancing, and then when I went to university, um, I saw all the um, actors across the quadrant you know, laughing, talking, smoking, eating solid food. And I thought, you know what? I think I'm only using half my life here. So I went over to the, the dark side of the theater world. But um, <clears throat> there's three uh, key things that make it a, story in a mission statement or a strap line or, or an, ad, uh, an ad. So when you're talking, especially some of you about content in that, and I know, uh, the, you know, the journalists will have known this already, but um, a story has to have a character, a really key specific event and feeling, authentic emotion. That's, those are some of the, the, the key ingredients in a story. So a lot of people say they're telling a story uh, and they go on with this narrative. Now, not all narratives are stories, but all stories are narratives. I'll just leave you with that one. <laughs> so ask yourself these three questions. What kind of feeling does this story or copy or um, live that I'm doing, what's the feeling that you wanna create? And who is the character that's telling this story? I mean, if it's written copy or if it's your presentation or your keynote, think about the character that's telling that story, the characters that you're introducing us to. The key event, and this is really important, as specific as you can get that key event, it really allows us to focus on something that we can identify with. Because in a story, we want two things. We want new information and we need that old mirror. We need to be able to recognize either ourselves in that character or that character needs to be somebody we aspire to or um, it needs to be uh, somebody we know somebody we know. And that's the same with an event. An event is something real specific. Um, back in the day in advertising, we used to call that stuff slice of life. 
those slice of life moments, those events that everybody, ah, oh, yeah, I've been there. Being late, everybody's been there, right? Being dumped, everybody's had that, right? Um, being um, hired for a job that you that you really wanted, or uh, being fired from a job, or leaving a job that you hated. I mean, these are events that we can all relate to. These are life events. Um, and that's where a lot of your stories come from are those threshold moments. So be real specific about that key event. And then this is, uh, you know, where a, a story is a true story is when something changed as a result of this event occurring. Because a story isn't just a beginning, middle and end. You have to set up what was normal. So the once upon a time, all the setting that was in that, then you have to have something that blows up or is out of balance. And that's a, a, a famous catchphrase that I use all the time. Your story starts when life blows up because when life blows up, that's when your story begins and the characteristics fall away and a true character, what's real, what you're really made of emerges. So um, that uh, is, are things to pay attention to there. Uh, once that blows up, things have to change because if they don't, then what was the point of everything going back to normal? So what's the new reality? What is gonna happen next? And that's why stories are so important right now because right now we're kind of lost in thinking, oh my God, these are such strange times. Oh no, what are we gonna do? This has never happened before. But yet this has happened before again and again and again, especially if you go back to the old stories, the traditional tales. If you go back in history to different stories, um, I know things are blowing up in the US right now, which is like such a concern for me. But actually, if you follow the history, this has been coming for a very long time. But there's two things that happen. Uh, I know a lot of times right now in current culture, people are like telling their story. So you get a lot of reality TV and a lot of uh, reality uh, or, or a lot of confessional stuff. And I would, just, um, I would just hold to you that there's a huge difference between inspirational and sensational. Inspirational will really um, inspire some sort of a change in somebody. It would, it would inspire um, a new knowledge and new information and a new perspective on things. It would give them something that they didn't have before. Sensationalism relies on spectacle and you definitely get a reaction, but what's the response that you want? What do you want people to do? And that's what I would always say to when I uh, work with my clients and um, people in my groups is that when you're choosing your story and you're matching your story to your message, bear in mind, what's the action that you want people to take? Because you tell that story with a purpose of moving people to action. So with that idea in mind about what do people want from your story, because I know a lot of people say, well, I don't really want to tell my story. It's just too personal. It leaves you open. It leaves you vulnerable. It leaves you open for people, um, people's, people's response to that and people's uh, pushback from it, you know, people judging you. And so I think that's one of the key things that stops a lot of people from talking about themselves or telling their story. They're afraid of shame and humiliation and being judged or being ridiculed. These are all real things. And uh, that is what, it, what we've seen happen quite um, drastically to some of these reality TV stars. You know, they, they've, uh, you know, I think the one committed suicide. That, I mean, this is horrible. But um, if you're telling an inspirational story, these are three things that people really want to know from your story. They want to know what experience taught you. That's why I devoured all those biographies. And I mean, I read everybody. I read Harriet Tubman. I read, you know, Florence Nightingale. I read, um, I read some of the guys. I read um, people like uh, Lindbergh. I read people like uh, Gelsey Kirkland, who was a ballerina at the time that I wanted to be. And I wanted to know what experience taught them. The other thing people want to know, and this is a really important thing, is what do you wish somebody would have told you? 
what's the advice that you would give? We have a lot of exercises that people do about um, letter to your younger self or letter to your future self. Um, but what's the advice that you wish somebody would have told you? Because that's why we're so hungry for stories. We need that cult, that referencing, that ground orientation. We need to know, you know, in this time of like, what's gonna happen next? What's gonna happen next? We need to know, well, if it's already happened to somebody, what would you tell me? What would what have you learned? And this is another thing that um, draws you to people's story is how do they keep their voice strong? How do they find their voice? How do they find the means to speak up and speak out even in times of adversity? Um, there was a, a story that I was drawn to uh, a while ago. It was written by Barbara Kingsolver, who was a scientist and then she was a journalist. And one of her first books was a nonfiction book about women in Arizona who, and it was called Holding the Line, who when their husbands had, were trying to strike for better working conditions in, a, in the copper mines there, um, they were told either you get back to work or you're all fired and they couldn't afford to lose their jobs. So their wives, these housewives that never would have you know, done anything like this, found the strength to stand up and pick it for their husbands and for, the, for better working conditions in that mine. So, what are the assets that you have, that you, the three biggest uh, business assets that you can have to, that your story will give you? And the first story that a business can tell, that's um, a asset, and many of you talked about that, especially the, uh, the, uh, the warehouse um, people, is the transformation, the value story. What is the value that you bring to uh, people. And then again, a character, a specific event, uh, an emotion, and then that transformation. Okay. Um, the purpose story, and that's the bigger game. This is like what your morals and values are, what you believe in, and how you example that. Um, what we're seeing a lot of uh, now as a, as a trend, but it's been moving this way all along because as bigger corporations become quite frankly redundant because they're just dinosaurs, they move too slowly, they take up a lot of resource, they're a top-down organization, all of that stuff is kind of um, going the way of the world now. Whereas entrepreneurial businesses like yours, they're, they're flexible, they're nimble, they're smart, they're responsive. Uh, pivot has been a big word, but pivot just means, you know, turning in another direction, you know, and you can do that in a day, you know. You've got people in your community that you can call and you can sort that website out and have it different in a, in, the, in a day. You can put stuff out on social media and say, hey, I'm doing this. And, and you, can, you can change it up because you're here to serve. And that's what entrepreneurs are bringing. They're finding solutions for problems that we have that no one's found a solution for yet. And many of your businesses, I will hold to you, started because of something that you needed that you couldn't find, so you made it up. You made, you made it happen. You found it for yourself, and then you shared it with other people. Um, so that bigger game, um, many of the education people, your purposes, especially working with, in prisons. Um, you know, I was uh, interviewing someone uh, for my uh, radio show that's going to be a podcast, Finding My Voice, and her business is Unlocking Language. She's a, uh, a speech therapist. And we talked about the fact that 70% of the people that are incarcerated have language difficulties, whether it's um, physical difficulties with their language or um, whether, or they, they uh, have uh, social communication difficulties, but it's communication is so important. So to align yourself with, for instance, my purpose is literacy and communication so that we hear people's stories because with all the false information that's out there, the most credible information is the stuff that comes from you. And that's why the most effective marketing is still word of mouth. So this is the beauty of these stories for your marketing is not only do you tell it, but story is an oral tradition. And so it gets passed along. And you create a culture of storytelling. So you everybody telling your story from my mouth 
to your ear and then to everybody else's mouth. They're all telling your story. And then it spreads and spreads. As storytellers, we have a, um, a saying that when you tell a story, uh, everybody that's going, everybody that's ever told that story before us stands behind us. And everyone that's going to take that story forward is in front of us. It's very simple um, optics, but it's very effective. Now, this is a, a story that's excellent as well. It's the origin story. And this is something that can bring you back to, you know, your business when you get really tired and you're thinking, you know, especially now when people are trying to do these like, you know, um, strategy and goal sheets and setting their, their 20, 21 goals. And you think, how can I plan when things keep changing all the time? Go back and write your business a love letter. Yeah, that's what I've decided to do and what I've done for myself. And go back to the origin of where your genius started. I mean, back before your business, the genius, where it started, the, this, this um, thing that you have for teaching, this thing that you have for um, making, uh, making sense of, you know, movement, like with Pilates, the body, you know, where did all that come from? Where does your genius come from? I um, have a, a good friend, Debbie, you'll know, um, Cecilia Harvey. And um, she looks like Barbie. And in fact, she used to play Barbies and she was a young girl, but she used to play chairman of the board with her Barbies, <laughs> not Barbie dress up. And Cecilia is a CEO and she helps other CEOs. And in fact, she, and then she had a, a business for a while called Walking Red, which is like, I'm a busy CEO. And when I have to go for an award ceremony, I want to look at my phone and have where I get my dress and where I get my hair done and my nails right now today. So, you know, that playing Barbie, that's where her genius started. <laughs> so essential stories really start like this. It's a core question that's generated from an event that causes some action. There's some emotion there. And then there's a problem. There's a choice. You have to do it. There's no good and bad in a story. It's only this or that. You have to make a choice and it's negative or positive. It'll take you in this direction or that direction. And there's tension, 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 risk. There's risk involved in this problem. And then you make that decision and then you get your outcome. Now in a business story, there's like maybe one, two, three of those. And then there's this object of desire that you want people to have, which might be your value um, story uh, in there or, the, or the, the purpose that people can align with or the origin of this is the essential of who I am. So who wouldn't want to hire an architect that had a passion for building tree houses when he was a kid, really. Uh, and, and that object of desire will um, put people on the path. So I think that um, we're coming to the breakout rooms. Is that right, Debbie? Yes? Usually, yes. Okay. <laughs> um, so uh, I just wanted to, um, to, 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 to reiterate again, there's action, emotion, outcome, and a character tells the story about a specific event. So when you're in your break, breakout rooms, I want you to talk about um, one, oh, see, I did those slides really quickly. It should be event, tuh, one event that uh, shaped you. Now, this is, goes to being able to trust yourself, to trust yourself with your own story because I think we don't trust ourselves to tell our story. Oh, you can tell it better than me. Oh, people don't wanna hear what I have to say. Oh, I'm really crap at going live. Oh, I don't know how to talk. Uh, and that's part of the, why I work with people on the delivery of their story as well as the structuring of it. Uh, because when we learn, once we have that structure in place, then we work on all the delivery techniques that go with it. But your story and what shaped you I mean, although we love to tell stories about, you know, the joy and the happiness and the good times, and those are great stories, but I hold to you that your stronger stories and the events that really shaped you are all the things that happened to you, like betrayal and loss and um, uh, things, that, things that, that weren't the greatest things, because those are the fires that forge us. Again, you're, there's three words that describe a story, and that's conflict changes life. And that's basically every story you can find that conflict changes life. So in your breakout rooms, discuss one event that really shaped you 
And then we're going to share in a, I used to be, but now I'm. So uh, I used to be um, running around like a hamster in a wheel all over the place, helping everybody, uh, teaching everybody how to, how to, you know, I was a Lambda teacher for 15 years and now I examine Lambda as well. So I used to run around doing that all the time, but now I focus on one thing at a time and that is helping people to tell their stories so that we can share more wisdom, real wisdom in the world. So do you wanna go into breakout rooms now? I'll yeah, this. I'm gonna do that. I've sorted the rooms out. So can you, yeah, brilliant, thank you. Hold on a sec, just bear with me. Why have I got that, why is that not coming up? That's weird. Hmm, okay. I don't know why it's doing that, but it is. Well, let me go back on gallery view. Let's go back on that. See if it does it. Oh, yeah, brilliant. Okie doke. Um, so for those of you who haven't done our breakout rooms before, a little icon will appear. You go into, um, you just click on it. It takes you into a breakout room with a small group of people. So you're all in breakout rooms of four or five people. Um, each room will have a leader. So I'm just going to read out a name for each room. And that leader will be responsible for making sure everybody has a turn and you've got around five minutes per person and just to summarize what everybody said and feed that back so we won't be able to hear from everyone but we can hear from each room leader with a summary of what everybody shared so room one is alex pearson room two is Catherine chapman room three is donna Ede, and room four is claire sweet okay any questions I'm just going to turn off the record button. Just bear with me a sec.